Hello everyone. So your root canal therapy, it basically comprises of three major steps that is access opening, then is the cleaning and shaping and the next one is the obturation. Now in this cleaning and shaping, you do the working length determination also. Now we have seen about the various techniques in this. So moving on towards this next phase of the root canal therapy. Now this lateral compaction technique, it is one of the obturating technique. Now there are various techniques in obturation, but the most commonly practiced one is the lateral compaction technique. So what exactly is obturation? So obturation, it is the method which is used to fill and seal a clean and a shaped root canal using a root canal sealer and a core filling material. Now over here, this is the cleaning and shaping which you have done in this particular root. So this is like the complete cleaned and shaped root canal. Now you will see that this canal, it is completely empty. So what you do in obturation is you fill this canal with some obturating material and also with a root canal sealer. So this is how it looks after the root canal therapy. Now this red one, it is your obturating material that is the most commonly used one. It is the gutta percha. And above this gutta percha, you use a core build of material. Now you use this gutta percha till the orifice of the canal. And above this, you are using a material that is known as a core build up. So there was a study which was done by Ingalls and he stated that 58% of endodontic failure it is attributed because of incomplete obturation of the root canal and because of that obturation is very important step in the root canal therapy. So now what are the criteria like when you need to obturate? So there are four basic criteria. Now this is also very commonly asked in Vivas that when you will start with the obturation after cleaning and shaping. So first is the tooth it should be asymptomatic. The next one is it the canal it should be completely dry with no weeping of fluids in the form of bleeding or discharge of the serous fluids. So the canal, it should be completely dry. Now the dryness of the canal, it can be checked with the help of the paper points. So next is culture negative and the closure of the existing sinus tract. So these two techniques or the concepts, they are not valid longer. Now starting with the technique of the obturation, starting with the first, that is the collateral compaction technique. So this technique, it involves the placement of the gutta percha cones in the canal. So you are placing the gutta percha into the canals and you are compacting them under the pressure against the canal wall using a spreader. Now spreader, it is an endodontic instrument. So it is used to compact. Now if this is your spreader and there's a GP cone which you have used. Now as the name says, it is lateral compaction. So you need to compact this GP cone towards the lateral wall of your canal. So with the help of this spreader, what you do is you compact this GP cone. So first we're going to see what are the clinical consideration that you need to keep in mind when you're starting with obturation. So first is the sealer consideration. Now sealer now, as I said in the obturation that we are filling the canal with the obturating material and we also seal the canal with a root canal sealing material. So in this, the sealer, it should be done with the help of lentilospiral. Now again, this is a endodontic instrument. So this is a lentilospiral. So with the help of this lentilospiral, you apply the sealer. So you take the sealer that can be your zinc oxide eugenol. So you apply the sealer on this and then you insert this lentilospiral into the canal. So this is how you do the sealing of the root canal. Or you can also do the sealing with the help of the master GP code. Now the next consideration, it is the spreader consideration. Now we have seen that spreader, it is used with the cone to compact them laterally. So the size, it is determined by the width of the prepared canal. So now you have done the preparation of the canal. So the size of the spreader, it is determined by this width of the canal. Now the next consideration, it is the master cone consideration. Now over here also we have seen, so we are using a master GP cone. So what exactly is the master cone? So this master cone, it should be similar to the master apical file size. Now you have done the cleaning and shaping. Now we have seen that in cleaning and shaping, we insert a 15 number file till the working length. And after that, what you do is you insert a 20 number file. So this 20 number file, it also goes to the working length. The next is you use a 25 number. So when you're using this 25 number, so you'll see that this 25 number file, it is also going till the working length. And then you move on towards the 30. Now, when you are inserting this 30, so you'll see that this 30 number file, it is thick. 
so because of that it will not go till the working length so your master apical file is the one which goes till the working length lastly so over here now we have seen 15 goes in the working length 20 is also going and the last one which was going was the 25 hence your master apical file will be a 25 number k file now your gutta percha stick they are also available in various sizes as of your files so this master cone it should be same as that of your master apical file now you have seen that your master apical file is 25 so you will start with the obturation with a 25 number gp cone now starting with the main technique so first you're going to isolate the tooth and you're going to dry the canal with the paper point so this is the paper point now these are your absorbent paper point so if there's any like fluid blood or anything which is present pus so you can see that on this absorbent paper point now the next is you're going to select a master gp cone so we have seen in the master cone consideration that your master gp cone it should be similar to the master apical file size so the next is you're going to select this master gp cone the next is you're going to check the apical tuck back and you're going to do the notching of the gp cone at the level of the reference point now that you have inserted your master gp cone so you're going to see that tuck back and then you're going to do the notching of the GP at the reference. So what you do, this is the notching. So this is how you create a notch at the reference point. So now that you have checked the tuck back, then what you're going to do is you're going to do the verification, radiographic verification of the master cone fit. Now that you have inserted this master cone into the like root. So what you do is you take a radiograph. So in that radiograph, you'll see that your master cone, it can be up to the working length or there are scenarios that your master cone it can go beyond the working length or it can be short of the working length so according to that you have to adjust the size of the master cone like appropriately and you have to see that you have to take the radiograph and you have to do the procedure until and unless you see that the master cone it is at the working length now if you see that your master cone it is at the working length so you're going to start with the like main obturation technique now after you have taken the radiograph so after that you are going to remove your master cone and then you're going to place it in sodium hypochlorite for 5 to 10 seconds so that it properly gets disinfected and after that what you do is you're going to manipulate the sealer now you do the manipulation of zinc oxide eugenol as you know so you're going to manipulate the sealer and then you're going to coat the canal with the sealer with the help of lentillospiral if you have lentillospiral or you can do the sealing with the help of the master cone itself so this is how it looks so this is your lentillospiral so you are going to apply this sealer on to this lentillospiral and then you're going to insert it into the canal and then you're going to properly apply the sealer all over the canal so this is the next step in your obturation technique now next is the master cone it is inserted till the working length and a spreader it is inserted alongside a master cone to a level which is 1 mm short of the working length now that you have done the sealing of the canal so what you do is now you're going to insert your master cone and with this master cone you are also going to insert a spreader what does this spreader do so you have to like compact with the help of this spreader this gp cone at one side of the wall so this is hence known as lateral compaction because you're laterally compacting the gp cone with the help of this spreader so now if this is your canal so with the help of spreader you will do the compaction on one side how are you going to disengage the spreader now the spreader it has to come out of the canal it should not be like it got engaged into the cone itself so what you're doing is you're going to disengage the spreader from the cone by rotating it between the fingers so you're going to like rotate it and you're going to remove that spreader from the cone or you can rotate the handle in an arc so you're going to rotate it in an arc or you're going to rotate it and you're going to remove the spreader from the canal the next one is you're going to place the sequential accessory cones by lateral compaction until complete obturation of the radicular pulse space is done completely now what you have done is now you have inserted so over here this red one it is your master cone after that what you do is now you have compacted it well on one side of the wall now this is not completely filled so you now you're going to take a accessory cone now you're this accessory cone it can be of any size so it can be same as that of a master cone or it can be a larger size or it can be a smaller size now it depends how huge your canal is so if you see that the canal is too big so for that you can go for a larger size accessory cones so now what you do is so your first master cone it is already placed in the canal properly 
the next one is now you're going to insert a accessory cone and then you're going to again insert this spreader so now this green one is your first accessory cone so now you have inserted it and you have also inserted the spreader and you are like compacting it on one side so now you have compacted one side now you're compacting it on the other side now again you're going to remove the spreader as of this same thing then again you're going to insert one more accessory cone so over here this pink one is another accessory cone so again you're going to insert the spreader with it and you're going to compact it on the one side then same you're going to do this procedure until and unless your canal it is completely compacted and you'll see that now when you're inserting the spreader in this canal so the spreader it cannot go into the canal because your canal it is completely filled with the obturating material so now the thing that you'll see in this is now your length of this gp cone it is same but when you're doing the obturation you'll see that the cone first cone it will come till here the next cone it will come above it so it, the next cone it will come above it now why so now this is because it totally depends on the preparation that we have done now we do the preparation first in the apical region then in the middle region and then in the coronal region as in the step back technique so you'll see that slant which you create in the preparation now because of that the diameter it is less in the apical so it goes on increasing till the coronal portion so because of that now when you're inserting your gp cone so apical you will see that two gp cone can go and after that you will see then you will see that it is coming 1 mm above like as you have done for the preparation so you will get this view when you are doing the obturation and lastly what you do is then you are going to take a radiograph and you are going to see that you have done complete obturation of the canal and lastly if you see that you have yes completely sealed the canal properly and then you are going to now this gp it is coming out of this tooth so what you do is then you are taking a hot instrument so you can take a spreader and then you're going to just heat the spreader and then you're going to place this spreader near the orifice of the canal and you're going to cut this so this is the obturation that you have completely done and you have completely filled and sealed your root canal and about this you'll place this temporary restoration so now that we have seen like your cone so it first cone it will go till apical then your next cone it will come 1 mm short of it then the next cone it will come 1 mm short of it so you will see that there is a space which is created now your canal it is present like this and you are doing the obturation in this manner so your first cone is going till here the next cone is going till here so the next cone is going till here now over here this is the space which is created now this space it is filled with the help of this sealer so now what are the advantages of this lateral compaction technique of obturation so in this it can be used in most of the clinical situation then the next one is during the compaction it provides the length control and thus it decreases the chances of overfilling so there are chances like in obturation you can overfill the canal but now in this technique that you have the length control and because of that you are like decreasing the chances of the overfilling so these are the two advantages of cold lateral compaction technique now what are the disadvantages so in this it may not fill the canal irregularities efficiently the next disadvantage is it does not produce a homogeneous mass that we have seen already and because of that you are using a sealer into it the next one the space which is existing between the accessory and the master cone is always present and the last disadvantage is you'll see the sealer to a gp ratio increased in this cold lateral compaction technique so these are the disadvantages of the compaction cold lateral compaction technique so this was all about it i hope you found this video helpful and if you did then please like comment share and do subscribe to my channel thank you so much